beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I am seeing rainbows like it is rainbow hour right now. And that is because we've got a Venus Kazemi new moon. We want to ignore Saturn, but we got to talk about it. So let's do that right now. Venus, our goddess of love and beauty, leaves the comfort of her Taurus domicile on May 23rd, and she's going to be hanging out in Gemini with the sun, joining the sun, and she's going to stay here through June 17th. So we love Venus and Gemini because even though she's not cozy in Taurus, we still love what Venus and Gemini can do for us in our social lives. Venus and Gemini pollinates our social life. It brings a freshness of new energy into our world. It inspires us to make new friends. It inspires us to hang out with people who we haven't seen in a long time. Like it inspires us to reach past like the usual friend circle and into the more distant pockets. Like, hey, I wanna see that person. I wanna do something different. I wanna go check out this new coffee shop. I wanna ride my bike that way instead of that way. It could be very mundane, but even these mundane shifts in the way that we seek joy, in the way that we seek delight, can bring a certain level of excitement and pleasure into our world of just like newness, spontaneity. So it has a scattering quality that is gonna permeate our social tendencies. We might just like wanna break free of the things that we normally and typically do in favor of the things that feel exciting or fresh and fun. It can also inspire us to shake things up in our beauty routines and even our cooking routines. So trying new recipes, trying new palettes, hello. And it can help us to just kind of take things less seriously in a way, like, oh, whatever, let it go. Venus in Gemini is just like more easily able to kind of like let things roll. Venus in Gemini inspires us to say things we might not normally say. It could be really fun in the flirtatious department, especially if you're single. Venus in Gemini can be a really good time because you're just like down to meet new people. You're down to try on different faces as you um, go through the routine of introducing yourself to new people, which can get exhausting. But Venus in Gemini says, you know what? I'm going to have fun with it this time. I'm going to do it a little differently. And so you can do that in your mainstay relationships too. Like, hmm, we're going to shake this up a little bit. So Venus in Gemini wants us to have a good time. Venus in Gemini says, eh, it's not that big of a deal. Let's just try it a different way. But yeah, so Venus in Gemini is going to be a good time, but there's also some really important things that are happening during this little transit, which is only about three weeks, um, pretty short for Venus. It's less than a month um, because she's moving really fast right now. Venus is moving super fast. What we're going to see is a Venus Kazemi, which is also a new moon. Yeah. Venus, Venus is going to share the same degree with the sun on and off from the 1st of June through the 6th of June. And what Venus Kazemi does for people is this is like the full moon phase of Venus. It's like the energy of Venus gets purified and reborn through the heart of the sun. It's like the energy of Venus, love, beauty, appreciation, delight is all getting funneled through the life-giving sun. So our job while Venus is in the heart of the sun is and you could do this intentionally, you might not even have to, is just to feel the love. You're going to be noticing beauty. You're going to be noticing the love, what you appreciate, what is pleasing to you, what is beautiful to you, what, what activates your heart, what is stimulating on your eyes, like what calls your name in terms of color, situations, music, um, like people, places. All these things are going to be a lot more noticeable and palpable to us during Venus's um, Kazemi with the sun. So this can be like a, a renewal of sorts for how we feel love, how we connect with love. Again, this is the point where Venus transitions from a morning star where she's a lot feistier. Venus is like, I am not settling when things are, are when she's in a Venus, uh, when she's in the morning star phase. And that's where you see a lot of collective unrest happening right now. This is one reason for that is because Venus as Morningstar says, I am not settling. I am not settling. Like I'd rather be alone, 
and um, then to just keep the peace, right? Because I'm not, this isn't peaceful. But this marks a point where Venus is going to start to sh- transition over to evening star. So it, on the world stage, we may see things start to, tension start to dissipate a little bit here. But for us personally, this is also a time where people are looking to partner. This is where, you know, we're, we're tired of being mad and just saying like, I'd rather be alone. This is the part in the cycle where Venus says like, I'm ready for partnership. I'm ready to not be alone. I'm ready to do what it takes to make things work. So this is a time, this is another thing that supports my theory of like hot, hot summer (laughs) in terms of relations is that this is going to be a time when people are just like, I'm feeling the love, I'm ready. So this all gets wrapped into this new moon in Gemini, which is exact on the 6th of June. This is going down at 16 degrees, Gemini, 18 minutes. All right, so here we see it on the chart. 16 degrees, Gemini, 17 minutes is the new moon. And you can see Venus is right there sharing that degree of 16 minutes. So we're going to we're gonna definitely consider this a, a Venus Kazemi still going on. So wherever you have Gemini in your chart, this is... <laughs> This is one of the cool things that's happening there right now. This is absolutely beautiful. This is like a renewal of sorts. Um, Yeah, like you're, this is really good for maybe patching things up and falling in love. So wherever Gemini falls, pay, pay attention. But I've been telling clients about this transit all year. So it's kind of crazy that it's already here, especially if Gemini is, let's say, your first house in your chart, or maybe you're. Um, ascendant is perfected to Gemini. This is really important and you're going to feel this in a big way. And if you don't know what I just said, if you don't know what that means, come get a reading with me. We'll talk about where your perfected ascendant is and what transits are the most important for you right now. But anyhow, um, this is going to be a, a Venusian charged new moon, but it is ruled by Mercury. And we'll talk about Saturn in just a second. It is ruled by Mercury. So what's also interesting here is this other conjunction happening in Gemini, which is Mercury conjunct Jupiter. So this aspect has actually just been exact on, um, let's see here, that's going to be exact on um, the 4th of June. So right as this Kazemi begins, we're going to see this other beautiful alignment of Mercury conjunct Jupiter. Now I did a separate video of Jupiter and Gemini. Go ahead and watch that. I also have an extended webinar available for purchase on my website. Um, it's two hours. It goes through all the history of Jupiter and Gemini and how we might see these things repeat in the present cycle. But this is exciting because this new moon just draws all this energy to this exciting stuff that's happening in Gemini. It's going to also spotlight Jupiter in Gemini and Mercury is definitely going to be um, like amplifying the voice of Jupiter in Gemini. So this can be a very outspoken, let me tell you, let me educate you, let me share with you. So if you've had something that you've been kind of keeping under wraps and you want to open up about it, you want to let the world know this is an excellent, excellent chart to do this with, um, or I mean, make it (laughs) and take it out of the 12th house, but you get what I'm saying. This is an energy for sharing. I also like to think of Mercury Jupiter as like an intellectual feat of some kind. So if there's something that you're studying for, or if you take pleasure in reading large books, um, this would be something that could also support you in that. So lots of fun stuff coming there. We're, it's definitely not going to be a quiet time. People are going to be opening up, sharing, maybe even announcing things about their relationships, things that are happening there. Um, so now it's time. We need to talk about the influence of Saturn. I read a quote this week, and I can't remember where it was. I think it was on Instagram. Um, If I remembered, I'd cite it, but it was basically saying that in relationships, we all have baggage and we can either trip over each other's baggage or we can help each other unpack it. And a lot of the people in the comments were saying like, yes, like if you find someone who can help you unpack and deal with, with your shit, like that's really awesome to have. 
And that's really what comes to mind when I think about the power of Venus Kazemi, because this isn't just an ordinary Venus Saturn square, which can sometimes highlight challenges in relationships, can highlight hurdles in relationships, and show us where the problems are and what we want to work on together to overcome. Or sometimes the Venus Saturn square says, this is a really big problem and I can't accept this anymore. But at the core of this square is this renewal theme and so much love. So whatever happens under this Venus Saturn square, it's because either we have like the highest love for ourselves and we're saying like, I deserve better. I'm going to, I'm going to leave this shitty situation or I deserve better. I'm going to remove my Saturn walls. I'm going to let that love in. I need to check my boundaries. I need to check where I'm resisting. Another thing might be, I have so much love that I really want to work on something in my relationship so that I can be more present, so that I can love more fully, get more out of this relationship. I don't want it to end because of the way things are. It might also say, oh my gosh, we are so in love with with each other or the situation. I want to think about the future. How can we grow? So whether that's your business, your kids, your partner, your home, whatever it is, Saturn is saying, let's think about the future. Let's think about these next steps. Um, it's something that we, we do need to think about. With Saturn, it's saying like, we got to bring some solutions in. We've got to be proactive. And it can either help us squash the problems or it can help us squash illusion so that we can be free to have the kind of love that we know is possible, the kind of love and delight we know we deserve. So it's really the way that this combination, this cocktail of transits is going to show up differently for each of us. But just know that there is a component of Saturn saying, hey, like there's something that we do need to figure out or plan for. Um, but yeah, around this new moon, there's just tremendous awareness of love. And perhaps the Gemini energy is expanding our mind, expanding our, our understanding of what's possible. Mercury, Jupiter can be really creative in terms of brainstorming new solutions to things. And that the Gemini energy is saying, how about we try it a different way? Um, but it's all about it's all about love and creating delightful experiences for ourselves and supporting the evolution so that we can continue to have that sense of freshness, you know, like when, like when we first fell in love with something, that's what this energy can help us establish for ourselves. So I know that there, there's a lot to unpack there. We, we talked about Venus moving into Gemini. We talked about Venus's Kazemi in Gemini. We talked about the new moon in Gemini. We talked about the influence of Saturn and the influence of the Mercury Jupiter conjunction. So regardless, the main takeaway is beautiful things are happening in our Gemini house. And I hope they're awesome for you. And let's do this again next time. That was your astrology shot of the day. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Thanks so much for tuning in with me today. For more astrology in your world, you can connect with me on all platforms at Astro Catherine. You can also head on over to my website, katherineurban.com, where you can book your next astrology reading. We'll go into depth into your natal chart, your progressions, your perfections, your solar return, your transits, and beyond. You can also join my mailing list where you can stay up to date with me on new classes as well as article drops. I look forward to connecting with you and I'll see you next time.